description. And uh, one of the things that is very different is how an anthology is labeled, whether it is labeled for the Hmong community, right? whether they are talking to each other, or whether it is an anthology that is meant for white people, that is meant to introduce white people to a Hmong uh, writer. And it is, it is a very different set of poems and a very different set of essays and pieces of fiction that will be selected um, to, to introduce. And I think I'm hearing a lot of that from, from the panelists about the, the, the essays and the jokes that you can tell and the references you can make for a, a queer audience. But I think, you know, versus saying, oh, we need to introduce the word quilt bag, you know, that my grandmother, for example, might be touched by some of the stories Dave was telling about his stuff growing up, but if he's saying quilt bag, grandma doesn't know that acronym. You know, so how, how do you know how, or if you're new, either doing new advocacy or new to doing advocacy, how do you know how to label and market the work you're doing so that it's getting to the people that you're trying to talk to? Well, that's, that's part of the core decision to make as you are putting together the idea, not even put, approaching people or figuring out, that's that's part of your theme. You, that is, it's integral. You have to decide that at the beginning, before you get a story, before you talk to any authors, before you uh, present it to whomever you want to pay you to publish it. You know, that it's, it's essential. You have to know what your audience is and what you're planning on doing, because otherwise it won't accomplish it, no matter what it is. So it's, it's, it's very, very important. I'm, I'm sort of turning over in my head the idea of starting an annual journal on a similar theme to the Lady Churchill's that I did. And so I've been thinking about this, uh, like new markets for fiction and writing pop up all the time and disappear. Uh, and for a lot of my career as a writer, uh, I've looked at those and gone like, oh, you know what, this flash in the pan, this doesn't really mean anything. Uh, but now that I've thought about it from the other perspective, uh, it seems really, really important. Uh, you, you put out a call. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done. Just what you're saying about uh, who are we addressing with this? So like, perhaps there is not right now a venue that uh, is about a for white people. Uh, and so they're, they're, if you write that, it disappears into the ether. Uh, so some editor goes out and does a ton of work establishing that and, uh, and requesting things that are that, um, and then struggles through a bunch of confused reviewers for a few years. But then finally, it establishes itself as something. And like I'm really looking forward to seeing what this kind of thing will be like in five years when it's uh, had legs for a while. People are writing for these markets, like on candy. I think people are writing for on candy now. Yeah. Which is awesome. They tell me that, so I don't believe that. Well, I mean, <laughs> would you consider starting kind of like a softball level, and then it, to, while you're establishing yourself, you know, you start at the, the lower level, the accessible level, and then start elevating it right. so that people they can go and find the backlog if, if you've got it, and then they just they come along for the ride, and you invite them to come along and follow you deeper into the rabbit hole. Would you consider doing something like that with this? I certainly would, yes. I thought about it a bit. I mean, what I that mean, makes me think of now is... Um, because that, I mean, that's how I've structured mine, is I started with a very broad or general, I know this will appeal to hopefully half the readership and maybe yeah. a little more if I'm lucky. And then, come on, you can, you can go a little further. Yeah. Come along with me. It's, I mean, it's not that bad. It's like two <laughs> steps. I can do this. <laughs> um, it, it, and, I'm just would you make that part of your business model? Yes, I totally would, although I don't know, like, would I write it in my business plan? Probably not, because I don't know. It, it seems like it would be why would, I, I mean, thing. why wouldn't you? Because uh, I, I can invite an audience, mm -hmm. but does that audience actually exist? Like, I can pretend like I'm making an audience, but they're all out there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I feel like it's mm -hmm. a, there's sort of a give and take as to how far you can push, depending on how the reaction has been. So, what, well, but that's part of being adaptable at that. Right, right. You know, you, so, okay, so, sure, so maybe I, I took two steps, let's just, let's go back a step. Let's go back right. a 
and, and regroup and then, no, we can do this. We'll, we'll pull you along a little further. <laughs> slower, slower. slower. <laughs> that was too fast. We can slow down. Just, just a little. It's okay. Come on, I promise it's okay. You know, it, 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 did you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, you're right. It's flexible. It's a good point. Um, what, I, what that made me think of was um, the, like, the trio of magazines, Cricket. Children's publisher that puts out a kids' magazine for 12 year olds, a kids' magazine for 16 year olds, a kids' magazine for 18 year olds. Mm -hmm. uh, what if you did that? You could have three different magazines uh, where, you're, where you're educating the kid up into radicalism, which. <laughs> I mean, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, but I'm, they, they do that. They, they, I highlights does that. Rufus three <laughs> five six to twelve. You know, they, it, it is. It's a slow. You can watch them build it. And I, I think if you're going to more technology and say the advocacy, you are a wonderful example of that. You, you start. Okay, women destroy science fiction, and, and yeah, everyone went along for the ride. All right, all right. Queers destroy science fiction. How's that go? Okay. All right, you're still there with me. We lost a couple people. That's cool. They'll they'll come around. I know. It's actually John John Fitz, for example. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But well, I well, yeah, I'm well, sorry. I associate yeah. you very strongly. Yeah. Well, I mean, we we are. We I mean we we, we heavily support those projects. And, and, and that's why. Kind of, yeah. I always hear about it from you. <laughs> like Twitter, that's well, where I always. I don't hear. It. I mean, I hear it from other people, but you're always the first person. I I like to because obviously the community has supported us. I mean, but yeah, I mean to get, but certainly with the chicks stuff, mm -hmm. with with the duck, with the with the geek girl stuff, which was right before their stuff. I mean, yeah, we started once again. You know, women, as you said, that they're hopefully fifty percent of your market, and there may be more, and then you'll get a little bit more, and then you get more, and you get more niche, and hopefully they can come along with you. It is hard when you start as a niche, you know, with one. This is my specific target niche, and then how do I get that into other places? Mm -hmm. And I also like to, you know, and certainly about Candy, which is, you know, our mission there is we are just a science fiction fantasy magazine, not technically geared, but because Lynn and I have the reputations we do as editors, there's an expectation, I said people are writing about Candy now, um, that there's going to be a certain kind of content in there, and certain writers, it's like, you know, you just, like what, what you you brought that up. I mean, I think at this point we had seven trans writers in eight or issues or something like that. You know, it, which for our means dream science fiction thing is not a bad number, really. <laughs> so it's, but we, you know, we also kind of know that if we, if we, I mean, part of it is that, and I'm sure Kelly's been blown for this ride in Anthos too. You can put in certain authors where you know this person has a huge amount of appeal. They're a New York Times bestseller. Everybody loves their stuff. And I can put this other person in this antho too, who's maybe got this little bit of more niche, edgy thing, and hopefully the readers for for the big New York Times person is, are going to keep reading. So you know, like with Glitter and Mayhem, we had a lot of people who bought it for Shannon because people love Shannon, and you know, and then oh, some of the reviews. I mean, this was one of those defect reviews. Um, some people were like, "Oh my God, this is great," and then other people were like. There literally was a review for Glitter and Mayhem on uh, Amazon still there, saying it needs to be labeled, I, I'm a Sean and fan, it needs to be labeled warning gay. Because there are too many gay stories in here. Do they not know? Have they been yes, Sean and them had that rant. <laughs> <laughs> saying I did pretty much I disavow this fan because clearly this fan does not know who I am or my work. <laughs> you know, because she was not happy. You know, and, and that's but you know, that that's one thing. You always remember the fan. You always remember the but I know a whole bunch of other people were like, wow, I didn't know these authors. These are stories I wouldn't have read. These are viewpoints that, you know, like, you know, Amalo Motar, who's here this weekend, wrote this gorgeous piece that has all, you know, it's a beautiful trans story, you know, and, and very thoughtful. And, and I mean, it was like, yes, we can get people to read this who have bought this for Diana Rowling, who's also a you know, you know, much, you know, their stories are a little bit more, you know, Traditional kind of what they're doing in their urban fantasy novels. 
so I think we're at time. So we'll let the next panel. Thank you guys all very much. It was a great discussion. And again, thank you for coming up early on a Saturday.